Hello everyone. I hope you all have been doing well. Um, as you can tell, I'm in full-blown allergy mode as normal as the seasons change. So please bear with my nasal self. Um, and uh, thank you all for your support and checking in with me um, this past month for Pastor Appreciation Month. It has been a, a, a very busy month, and um, I got to uh, get a lot of rest and get a lot of things done at home, and um, I, Terry and I, uh, we're big uh, fans of Joyce Meyer. I call her my spiritual mom. I uh, got to go over to Atlanta and see her live and in person uh, preach, and it was amazing. What she can do at 81 is phenomenal. Um, also, I've uh, got to go up to North Georgia to the Apple Farms, which uh, for me is like it's like an amusement park, and uh, it is where I love to be, and um, it was a true blessing to get to be with my best friend, my chosen sister, for that time of um, just enjoyment, recharge. The world is so crazy. Um, now it's time to be back. It's uh, time to get ready for Thanksgiving and Advent, and uh in the life of ministry, um, it is a joyful time, but it's also a very busy time. And um, so, it, and it's the time I look forward to um, during Advent. It, it's just such a time of joy. And Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. So, um, to preach on how to be more thankful and grateful for our blessings and everything that God has given to us and Jesus, his gifts. It, it's just a really great time, even though the world is in turmoil and wars and getting darker every day. We know where, as Christians, our light comes from, our joy comes from, all of our blessings. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, we know who is still in control of everything, and that is God Almighty. He has not left the throne. He is still there. And it is that time again to um, preach about and talk to you about and advise you about um, what's coming up this week. It is not my favorite thing to preach on. Those that follow me on social media know exactly how I feel. Um, I pray about everything. And uh, I know that God is in control, no matter what. He got us through these last four years of debauchery. That's the only word I can come up with, debauchery. This is a unique election, and uh, my title for today is Voting as a Christ Representative. If you have been saved and you profess that Christ is your Savior and He lives within you, you are His representative in this world, not just this country, not just your local government. He is... You are his representative. And our world is not acting like it. So many that profess it and I see things, I hear things, and I hear them speak, and I am like, how can you feel that way with Christ living in you? And that's what we're going to get into today is how you are representing Christ and when you go to the polls, how you need to take Christ with you and meditate and pray and ask for discernment before you make that most critical decision. It is not just a decision about your feelings. You don't need to vote with your feelings. You need to vote. It's not just for yourself. 
It's for this country. It's for your community, your household, but it's also for the world. The United States is very important to the entire world, especially Jerusalem and Israel. One president that is running, many decades of presidents said that they would put the embassy back in Israel and, and declare its capital. Only one actually followed through. President Trump had the guts to do it and did it. So many others claimed they would do it, said they would do it, just didn't get around to it. He made that a priority. Another candidate that's running at a recent rally, someone yelled out, Jesus is, is king. And that person, she said, you're at the wrong rally. They have both shown how they will govern Christians, how they truly feel about them, no matter what their lives reflect. One is not an enemy of the church and one fights for our freedom of speech and the other one is, is told us we as Christians are not welcome. And they fight every day to silence us. If one candidate gets in office, what I preach weekly and daily on my, my social media and to the world will be deemed hate speech. I just recently heard this very week in a country that is under communist and Marxist law, which is what one candidate wants to turn us into. Ministers were planting churches in countries that that is not allowed. They were rounded up. They were asked to denounce their faith and denounce Christ or die. This is still going on in this world. This is not something from the Bible that's happened thousands of years ago. This is happening right now. All 37 of them refused their request and they were killed. I said just recently, if things don't turn around in this world and then especially in this country, I will be put to death or imprisoned for my faith, but I will never deny Christ. And you, as someone who professes Christ as your Savior, you are not to as either. Because if we deny him in front of, of the world, he will deny us. Jesus will deny us in front of his Father, and we will be cast into hell. I would rather die here and know that my eternity is in Christ than to live for this world. Because this world, is it's getting darker daily and it's not a place I care anything about living in much longer. So anytime the Lord's ready to take me, I'm ready. You may not be there. But it, all I can say is you need to be getting prepared. Because the day of the Lord is coming, whether it's through our earthly death of just natural death or accidents or whatever, or the, the end times. We are another day closer than we were yesterday. So remember that when you go to the polls this week. This is not a sermon I look forward to. I have put it off all day. And then I watched a sermon from Joyce that talked about procrastination and how that's a sin. And I was like, oh, time to get it done. Time to get it done. And the same thing on Tuesday when you go to vote. 
time to get it done. What is right is right. It is not a better country the past four years as it was the four years prior. Yes, we had a global pandemic in there. But, you know, I could afford groceries and gas and utilities. And, you know, I actually had a little left over. That hadn't been the case the past four years. We haven't had a safe, secure border. We had that before. They're wanting to take our rights away from what we say and uh, guns. All of these things. If you're not a criminal, I mean, criminals are going to get guns. I hate to tell you all that. Take the guns. Take the guns. Okay, people, uh, I, I saw a story that someone was stabbed recently and killed. Okay, are we going to take all the knives? Are we going to take all the rocks? Are we going to take all the whatever? Yes, guns are... are out of hand i won't deny that but taking them out of the hands of of good citizens is not the answer either we need to be able to protect ourselves the constitution says that we should be able to protect ourselves so remember that tuesday and it's no longer about republican or democrat it is about good and evil and we see that there's enemies of the church and non-enemies of the church it is not one person it's the entire party and how they have governed over time i get so sick of these people talking about that the church should not be involved in government that is not true and i've got many many quotes to back that up we should be overly involved in politics and government. That is our right. That is what the Constitution was set up and founded on, Christian principles. We are one nation under God. And no matter what the liberals want, they want to take God out of everything. They just want to go out and, re and have abortions on demand right out in front of their convention. And no one is, is, ta is, is banning abortions, which I wish they would, because it is murder. It's not a fetus. It's a baby. And it is murder. And it makes me sick to my stomach. That people, that is one thing reproductive rights no you want to go out and you want to sin and then you want to kill a baby and that is an, yet another sin god can forgive those sins but to do it over and over and over again it, it, it it's just so sad and so sick and it spoke about it in revelations but as a christian it just just makes me physically ill to see the things that these people are chanting and running their campaign on. It's sick. I put a post on um, my Facebook page as my um, profile picture. And it comes from um, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 2. First of all, then urge the petitions, the special requests, Prayers, prayers for others, and thanksgiving to be offered on behalf of the people. For the kings and all who are in, posi in positions of high authority, so that we may live a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. I just can't emphasize enough that God's getting fed up. The church has always set back. For so long, we are guilty of letting all of this happen. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We didn't want to offend anybody. But we didn't care that it was offending God. And that's exactly what it did. And it's doing it every day. 
What is your vote going to be? Is it going to be to not hurt someone's little feelings? Or is it going to hurt God's feelings? That's who you should really be more concerned about than your next door neighbor, your coworker, or even your child or your, or your spouse or your parents. You need to go in there and vote in a biblical worldview, not some social, I want to get along in kumbaya moment. It's just sickening. And like I said, we are a country founded on Christian principles. Psalms 33, 12. Blessed, fortunate, and prosperous and favored by God is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has trusted as his own inheritance. You need to take that scripture with you when you go to vote. You need to really, really consider what these people stand for. And get over uh, people's personalities. A lot of people don't like my personality, and I couldn't care less. So what if one candidate has a New York City cab driver's demeanor and way he talks? My 401k was a lot better. I could afford gas and groceries and utilities without going and having to get a loan. My border was secure. He wasn't coming after my free speech in the church. Really give it a lot of thought. Get out of your feelings. Get into the Bible. Get into prayer. Let God lead you. And like I said, this is a very unique time. Just because she says that the other person was running the country the last four years, anybody with half an ounce of sense knows that wasn't true. And she signed off on all of these, these asinine things in Congress, and, and she was the deciding vote on so many. Do you want your daughters having men in their locker rooms? And playing sports with them, I, I wouldn't. Start thinking. It Put yourself in the shoes of other people. I don't have children, but I put myself in the shoes of the ones that I love that have children. Get out of your feelings. Get into the Bible. Get into prayer. What would Christ want you to do? Not just your little feelings. It's not always just about you, darling. Oh, and the one about separation of church and state. Let's get into that. Those come from letters from Thomas Jefferson. And uh, it was later um, put in as the Establishment Clause. Thomas Jefferson wrote it, it's not allowing the government to establish one church like what they had left England. They had to worship the Church of England. It is not establishing a one church, but, or one religion. It is, though, to keep the government out of the church, but not to keep the church out of government. Study people. Don't let the media be your teacher. Research it yourself. I remember it from 8th grade uh, civics and government. 8th grade. I still remember it. Do some research. Learn some things. Don't let the media be your teacher or your guide. Because trust me, they, they turn every few minutes and if you breathe or say one thing wrong they'll try to cancel you they'll discard you they are not your god and they are not your teacher open a book every once in a while just saying as a christian it is our duty to vote and serve in government and support it's our passiveness that has gotten the world in the shape it's in now. We still have a chance to save it from going down a deep, dark 
whole. But it starts with you and I. Educate those around you. They want to throw out separation of church and state. Tell them what that really means. Tell them what the Bible really means about these things. Not just your media. The first president up until uh, Obama used a Bible to be sworn in. The day that George Washington, our first president, took oath of office by placing his hand on the Bible, after being sworn in, he kissed the Bible and then had held a prayer and worship service in Congress. This is what we need to get back to today. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine the uproar that some of them would make about that? But yet that is what our country was founded on. The Liberty Bell has Leviticus 25.10 inscribed on it. The Supreme Court building has Moses carved in the middle and the two tablets of the Ten Commandments on each side of him. The Bible is not only our daily guide, but it is our voting guide. God is not a party. It's pro-life, not abortion. It's secure borders. Look at heaven. It has a strict immigration Philosophy, you've got to go through the Son and declare Him as your Savior to get through the gate. It has a gate to keep out those that don't belong. There's a strict vetting process. It starts with the Bible. Why should our country be any different? Other countries do the same thing. We're not being racist. We're not being evil. We're just trying to vet out and have the best fruit in our country someone that's going to come in and, and we're all immigrants to a point of or of descent come here and bring something other than violence and and murdering and raping and drugs and evil let the good ones come in that could have a cure for a disease or a new technology or a new way of farming or something Freedom of speech is at the forefront as well. The, if they get elected, like I said, what I'm preaching right now will be deemed hate speech. It's not hate speech. It's just giving you a dose of real talk, discipline. And the world needs more discipline. Because it's obvious a lot of y'all didn't get spankings growing up and you wasn't ruled with a, an iron fist. I was. And I didn't like it, and it wasn't always fair, but it made me a better person. And some of you need a little real talk and a little spanking, maybe. <laughs> Your children. I don't mean beatings. I didn't get beatings. We need discipline. We need structure. We need rules. And we need to follow the Constitution. The Bible and the Constitution are the guidelines for our country. So when you go to vote, remember God's words. Pray for discernment and not your feelings. If you ignore God's word and his guidance, you will face extreme judgment. He sees all. He knows all. You can go in there and say, I voted this way, and knowing that you didn't, but God knows everything. Pray for a revival to break out into this country. I'm seeing little bits of it. I think that we're about to go into a state, if all goes well, we're, we're not in, put in jail for what I preach or other people preach or beheaded. I think there is a great revival that can break out. And um, let's 
see. Jeremiah 29, 7. Seek peace and well-being for the city where I have sent you into exile and pray for the Lord on its behalf. For it is in its peace and well-being you will have peace. We need that revival and we need it now. I have some quotes. Please bear with me. George Washington, our first president. Do not let anyone claim tribute of American patriotism if they even attempt to remove religion from politics. Thomas Jefferson, the First Amendment was created for a wall of separation between church and state, but that wall is a one directional wall. Get that in your mind, one directional by Thomas Jefferson. It keeps the government from run, running the church, but it makes sure that Christian principles will always stay in government. John Quincy Adams. No book in the world deserves to be studied so increasingly, so profoundly meditated upon as the Bible. And some of these, and, and some of what I've preached on today came from uh, I listen to Gardendale First Baptist Church. I love that. I watch it. It's an hour and a half from where I live. I have the luxury of watching it on Sunday mornings. Um, these quotes came from, from that sermon. And I'm so thankful that um, I didn't get distracted so I could listen to it. The devil tried. And I knew from how hard he was trying to keep me from watching it. Because I record it so I don't miss it. I knew that there was something powerful in it because I just gotten in tune with that. And so I know when he's fighting so hard to keep me distracted that there's something good in it. Theodore Roosevelt. In this actual world, a churchless, churchless community, a community where men have abandoned and scoffed at or ignored their religious need is a community on a rapid downgrade. This was Theodore Roosevelt many, many, many decades ago. Well, let me tell you something, we're there. Now God and, and our prayers and our actions can get it turned around, but we gotta do our part. If a man and nations would be but lived by the precepts of the ancient prophets and teachings of the Sermon on the Mount, problems which now seem so difficult would soon disappear. The bottom line is, is our country was founded on these Christian principles and beliefs, and it is uh, our turn to protect them. I know that this was really passionate. Wasn't my light and fluffy like I like to. We're not living in a light and fluffy time. We are living in a very, very, very important, concerning time. And as Christians, it is up to us to do what is right. No matter what you feel or how you feel about a person, you must go in there and you have four years of each person that is on that ballot for the very first time in our lifetime. It is up to you and I to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. I will leave you with my favorite verse from the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Do we want that or do we want destruction? I want to be joyful and prosperous and have a good life. I want that for you and, and 
I want that for all around the world. And we are a huge piece to every country's puzzle. Make the right decision this week. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you with very heavy hearts as to what is going on into the world. We know that you are still on the throne. You are still in control. You see all, you know all. You sent your son to die brutally on a cross for all of us to have salvation and eternity in heaven. The Bible is our God and prayer is our activator. Dear Lord, no matter what happens Tuesday, we still know that you sit on the throne. You are still in control. I ask you, Lord, to guide and direct every person that hears this message and the ones that don't. As they go into vote, that they vote in a way that glorifies you and your precepts. Guide us, Lord. Cover us, Lord. And as we always ask, as we lift up those that are hurting, mourning, sick, we ask for your divine healing. You are still the great physician, the great protector. You are the great I am. Dear Lord, give us a hedge of protection around each and every one of us, our families, our, our co-workers, our church, our world. Keep us happy, healthy, and safe from anything or anyone that could harm us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I hope you get something out of this message. I hope that you make the right decision. Your decision doesn't just affect you, it affects us all. I hope that I have a lighter spirit when I sit, sit down again. And if not, if uh, God decides to take me before uh, my next message, it has been an honor to minister to you. I take it very, very seriously. But if not, I will be back and prepared to bring the message the Lord puts on my heart. Until we meet again, God bless each and every one of you.